This is the Canon 7D Mark II. It is a DSLR camera, which is digital, single lens, reflex camera. Reflex refers to the fact that it has a mirror just underneath this prism that goes up and down very quickly whenever you take pictures. Since we're here, I'm going to talk to you about the fact that it has a zoom lens, which is 18 to 135, our widest zoom range lens that we have, and it only comes with the 7D Mark II. Whenever you take out the cameras, you will always be provided with a lens cap. Please make sure you remove it from the camera to take pictures, and when you finish with the camera, it must always be returned with the camera. The other thing I want to point out, whenever you take out the cameras and you do not have it on a tripod, I recommend you put the camera strap around your neck at all times to keep the camera safe. The lens has two buttons on the side just here. The first one at the top is AF to MF. That refers to it having autofocus or manual focus. If you flip it over to manual focus, you can then focus it yourself with this ring just here. The other button below there is the stabilizer. These lenses have image stabilizer built into the lens, which is very useful if you're using the camera at slow shutter speeds or in very windy conditions. Now we have a lot of buttons on here. We won't go through every single one of them. We'll go through the key ones you need to know about. But as I'm in this position, I'd like to point out it has two ways of viewing your images. The most important one, the best one, is the optical viewfinder. Highly recommend you use that one at all times. It gives you far more accurate a view of the image because it's in effect going straight through the lens, through a prism. It's the best to use, especially if you're outdoors in bright sunlight. You could use the viewfinder just here, LCD one, but it will be rather restricting in bright sunlight. You won't get a a very good view, an accurate view of your images, so best not to. In order to start using the camera, you have to turn it on. There is an on-off switch just here. You flip it over from the off to on, camera comes alive, and the camera at this present moment, you may be able to see on the screen, is in the auto mode, so it will do everything for us. It will calculate your exposure from the scene right in front of it, automatically opens up the flash gun, because it thinks it's too dark and adds that bit of flash and the camera just takes your picture. Now, if you wanted to, as I said, and you wanted to view on here, the live view image, not through the prism, you just have to press on the start stop and it will then flip over to live view. And there you can see exactly what's happening on there. This is the shutter release button. These grips are designed so that your hand will rest automatically on the shutter release, ready to take a picture. This is the mode dial. I'm going to talk to you about the various things that you can use within the modes to adjust the camera to give you the best photograph, be it for sport or for landscape. To start with, I'd like you to keep it in the A. The A is a scene intelligent auto. The camera chooses the shutter speed and aperture needed to properly expose the image. In order to move the mode dial, you have to push in the center button here. It has a locking device. I'm gonna use this hand here, and I'm gonna turn it so it goes over to the next one, which is P. P is program auto exposure. The camera chooses the shutter speed and aperture needed to properly expose the image, but you can shift the exposure to change the shutter speed or aperture combination to suit the type of scene you are photographing. A, you have no control over. P, you have a bit of control, which is very useful. Push the lock in again, go around to the one that says TV. TV is your shutter priority. The shutter is the noise that you hear when you take a photograph and your shutter speed will be prioritized when you put it into the TV mode and your aperture will be adjusted appropriately to go with the shutter speed to get the best. Next to that, we have AV, AV, aperture priority. You choose the aperture you want and the camera provides the shutter speed needed 
to properly expose the image. Next, M. M, as you probably guess, is the manual. You choose the shutter speed and aperture that you want in order to get the best exposure possible. Above that is B, or bulb. It's a bit of an old school type term now. This is where the shutter stays open for as long as you are pressing the shutter release button. So it's very useful for doing your own long exposures. Above that is C1, C2 and C3. These are custom settings where you put in the settings that you prefer for any particular location and allowing you to quickly move into C2 for maybe sports photography and then C3 maybe for portrait photography specifically. Settings that you'll put in later on, they're more advanced. I'm just going to go through a couple of the things here on the back. The first thing I'll show you is the quick menu. Quick menu allows you to go into different things on the back and allow you to adjust them. As we're in the auto mode, we can't adjust that much. So let's go over into the program mode. We can use this wheel, jockey wheel here, to move between things and change them. I'll just go through them all. This one is your ISO. I personally try to keep the ISO number down as small as possible because the higher the number, the lower the quality of the image in my view but sometimes needs must. If you want to do sports photography, you might have to really use a high ISO number. So I try whenever I can to keep it as low as I possibly can, somewhere around here, depending on the actual light situation I'm taking pictures. Down from that, we have the flash control. We come in here and we can control how powerful the flash is on the camera from the quick menu too by moving the scroll backwards and forwards. If we take it down to minus three, that means it's reducing the power of the flash gun by minus three. Or, all the way up to the top, we can add it, make it even stronger flash gun. Best to leave it in the middle, unless you desperately need to. Next to, next to that is overriding the camera settings for the flash by using exposure compensation and it will adjust it either minus or plus. So if you go minus, it will be darker. If you go plus, it will be brighter, as you can well see. Best put it back to the middle again. Don't want to mess it all up for anybody else to use. Below that, we have picture style. These are settings within the camera to improve the picture to be prioritized for taking a portrait photograph or a landscape photograph. These are permanent and may be very hard to change if you decided you didn't like the effect that you've done. Because of course you could change it to black and white, but you can't change it back to color when you use that. So I strongly recommend you generally use the settings built into the camera as default and don't change them very much. Next over from that is our white balance. Auto white balance is predominantly left on, but if you knew that you would be taking photographs in the shade outside, I would recommend changing it over. Or if you knew you were going to be indoors taking pictures in fluorescent lighting, I'd change it over to that rather than using the auto settings. Plus you can actually change the Kelvins all by yourself if you wanted to. Next to that is white balance shift. So you can change the white balance within here all by yourself, but it'll make it permanent. That's a feature for maybe more advanced use. So let's just leave it for now. And over from that, we have auto lighting optimizer. It's just another effect. Don't bother with it for now. Just stay with the other camera settings. We can change our metering system. At the moment, it's using evaluative, the best one, the one I generally use the most. But you could say, for instance, you wanted to use spot metering. If there was a specific runner that you wanted to have uh, correctly exposed against a very bright or dark background, you might want to change it over to that. But when you finish, probably best just to turn it back to evaluative. That is personally my favorite and I use that one an awful lot. And next to that is the drive mode. 
In the drive mode, you can change it from one photograph at a time, or you can change it to high speed. So it takes a lot of photographs very quickly, straight after each other. Like that. Just go back into it. It also has a slower high speed setting, plus it also has the silent mode. Let's put it into silent, you can listen to it. So it is taking photographs a little bit slower than the high speed, but it does it as silent as it possibly can. Very useful. It also has self timer settings where it's just two seconds or longer, 10 seconds. Very useful. Next, we have the autofocus system. One shot is when you put your finger on the shutter and you just want to take a picture. As soon as you touch the shutter, it will focus on that area that you've chosen. If you choose active servo, that one means it will stay in focus all the time. You do not have to push the shutter and it will stay in focus on the area that you have chosen to stay in focus. In my view, this camera has the best, fastest autofocus system within the college cameras. In order to change the autofocus choice, the area and so on, you have to push this button just here, then it will give you a choice. You have to then push the MFN and this will then allow you to scroll through the various choices. Yeah. So this one is auto, 65 points. This one is spot manual, and you can move this spot manual around. This one is spot selection, move it around. And this one is more groups, but you can move them all around as well. Larger groups, bigger groups again, you can move more about. And then wide groups as well. Very, very useful. Now I'd like to talk to you about the LCD monitor on the top, just behind the shutter release. This monitor gives you an awful lot of information that you might not be able to see from the screen just here if you're using the optical viewfinder, for instance. So I'll just go through all the various different things on there. First of all, you see there is a scale going from three to five. This shows you whether the exposure is going to be correct or too light or too dark, okay? So that just gives you an exposure scale for you to be aware of. You can see that on the screen of the optical viewfinder. Just above that, it shows you the ISO number. So we can press here and we can change the ISO number to a larger or a smaller number. As I say to everyone, the higher the ISO number, the lower the quality in my view. So you're best to keep the ISO number as low as you possibly can to get the best quality possible. Next to that, we have the auto white balance, AWB. We can change the AWB by pushing on that button there, and we can then use the scroll down the bottom here to adjust it. This also is a button that can be used to change the exposure setting from evaluative to spot or wide. I generally leave it on evaluative. Next to that, we have the shutter speed. The shutter speed is chosen by whatever the aperture speed is because we are on aperture priority on this camera at the moment. So I can adjust the aperture, bringing it smaller or larger, and it will choose the appropriate shutter speed to go with that one. Okay? Now if I scroll down here, I can override the shutter speed as well but you can see it would be either over or underexposed in the camera's point of view. Just next to that, we have the amount of photographs that are available to be taken on the camera's SD card. And we've already done that one. Now just there is the battery, how much battery power you have at any time. And then just below that, you have the motor drive settings and the autofocus settings. Now we can change that one by pushing this button once and we turn this one and we're changing the focus from continuously focus, focus when you press the aperture button and focus just when you're ready to take a picture, it'll do it just once. And below that we can change the drive. If we change that, we can adjust this to be either taking photographs at high speed 
or an individual photograph. It has lots of different options in there, meaning very quick, or we can change it to being silent. So when we click it onto there, it'll be on S. It's a little bit slower, but still very fast. And the high speed setting means you will go through your pictures very quickly. Um, it's something like eight frames a second. Yeah. Also within there, you can change it to self timer. So it has several different options as well. Okay. Then going on to the last button just here, it is the ISO and the flash gun control. Another way to control the flash gun. We click onto that and we can change the actual flash gun power. We can have it less, camera recommends or more. Very useful to doing fill flash. Then if we wanted to, we can change the ISO number just like that by going up and down. These cameras come with built-in flash gun. In auto, in low light, the camera will automatically use the flash gun. But you may decide in one of the other modes that you wish to use the flash gun. Say you wish to do a slight fill light onto a subject, a portrait for instance. So if you want to do that, you have to press this button just here. On the side, automatically opens up the flash gun and then you could take a picture. Well, I've shown you how to take photographs with this camera. Now I want to show you how you operate this camera as a video camera. In order to do that, you have to turn this button just here over from the still photography to video. Click it just once, then the camera will go into video operational mode where you'll be able to use the screen to view what you're taking a video of. When you're ready to start recording, press the start button and you will see the red circle just there indicating that the camera is recording a video right now. When you finish recording, you've guessed it, press the stop. When you are in video mode, you get a different display of information on the back of the screen. Let's go through them. First of all, this one shows you how much battery you have left. This shows you how many hours or minutes you have left to record. This shows you how many pictures you can take, over a thousand here. Next to that, it shows you you're in TV mode, meaning you're in shutter priority. And we're of course in the video mode, hence as the video camera. So first of all, we have the choice of autofocus preferences. We talked about autofocus before. This one's very useful. It will be detecting a person's face for taking video footage. Very useful indeed. Below that, we have the drive mode. Although it's in video, you can still use it to take still photographs and change how fast it takes a photograph. Below this, you have the choice to be able to change what video format you're recording in. Leave it in default until you're used to it or decide you need something different. Below that, we have our audio levels. Again, you can obviously see my audio level here. On the other side, you have to push this down it shows you which cards you are recording on. Below that, it has your white balance setting, which you can change yourself to anything you fancy. Picture style, you can adjust it. We've talked about that earlier on. And auto lighting optimizer. That's more advanced as we've discussed, so probably best to leave it. In order to view any of the photographs that you've taken, all you have to do is go to the play symbol just here. It's in blue on the left. Press it in once and then you can scroll through the photographs that you've got on your camera's SD card. If you see any photographs that you wish to delete, all you have to do is to press the waste bin just here. Press it once and it'll say, do you wish to erase? You have to turn this scroll here and say yes. You press set, which is the OK, and it deletes that image. In order to change the batteries on these cameras, you have to take it off the tripod if it's on one, or you have to just turn it upside down, and then you'll be seeing below here, this is the battery compartment. You push in that lever just there, it opens up automatically. And you have a release button, which is white, push it once, and the battery automatically pops out a bit for us to take it out and change it. These batteries, again, cannot be put in the wrong way. If you try to turn it and put it in the wrong way, you'll damage the camera. So you make sure you have the slots just there. And as you'll see, it literally goes in like that. And then it's located, close the hatch, batteries changed, 
ready to go. This camera records onto two different sorts of memory cards. They're both within here, in the grip. You only have to push that out and then it'll open up. It has an SD card, which is what you will mostly be recording on. Push it in once and out comes the SD card. Must make sure that you put the SD card back into the camera in the correct way, with the image facing towards you. If you try to put it in the wrong way, this is just an example, you will damage the camera or you'll damage the SD card because it just will not go in unless you force it. Please don't do that. So we put it in that way around, image facing forward, and as you see, it just slides in nicely and I push it in until it clicks in place. It also has a CF card. This you have to release by pushing the gray button just down here and then it slightly protrudes out the CF card. These cards are not what you record on most of the time, but you can have them there as a backup. Again, do put them in correctly. If you try to put them in the wrong way, you will damage the camera and the CF card. It slots in very smoothly, just like that, locked in place. Then close the cover and then it's secure. Once you have finished with your photographs and made full copies of them onto your external hard drive, you must format the cards within the camera. In order to do that, you have to go to the menu button just here. Then you have to use the joystick to move across to here. So bear with me a second. There we go. Then you can use the actual scroll to move down and format. Format, yes, card one, sorry, it's card two, that's the SD card, formatted and format the CF card as well, just in case. Most of the time though, you probably only format the SD card. Format. 